Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today we're going to be talking about Marina. We'll be going all of her buttons, her combos, her general game plan and strategy, and we'll even be going over all of her custom moves, and so all the things you can equip and how we'll use them effectively. But before we get into those, I've just got custom, uh, basic Melina here, so I don't have anything equipped, none of her extra abilities. But even just base Melina is a pretty strong character. So her universal specials that he has, she has, are her side toss, her ball roll, and her telekin. So even though there's only three of them, just these moves on their own leave her with a, a pretty well-rounded toolkit. So she can get like most of what you would do with a character done, even without equipping anything special. So her side toss is, you know, it's a pretty great projectile to be honest. It has decent startup frame to only 15, and because it throws two projectiles, it goes through a lot of projectile absorbs, kind of like um, Kitana's Royal Protection, or Rain, or uh, Frost's, their like, projectile absorb, absorb shields, because it'll go through the first one, and the second the second side will go through them. And when she amplifies, she throws a total of four size, which is does a pretty decent amount of chip damage, if I just do something like this. So yeah, good for chipping out the opponent at the end of the game, and because it has four attacks, it goes straight through the last breath and the the like the defensive gauge that protects you at the end of a round. Um, but they're also really good for keeping you safe at the end of a lot of, of strings. So things that would generally be unsafe and you don't want to throw out too much on their own, kind of like her 4-2-3. Um, her this string is unsafe, so you kind of only want to really be doing the 4-3. Well, now you can cancel the 4-3 into Amplified Side Toss, and she's negative 10 with all this pushback. So there's almost nothing that a character can do to punish that. Like, I don't think anyone's going to be punishing minus 7 from all the way over here. And so she can do that to a lot of her strings that would be unsafe. So, like, her forward 4-3 four, generally is unsafe at minus 11. And because they're blocking that overhead, there's nothing they can do about this. And you get pushed back all the way over here, minus 9. You're basically back in neutral. You can go in for a ball roll or something if you think they're going to try and press a button on you. So after some strings, it isn't actually guaranteed. So like after this 2-3-3 uh, three, three string, um, they can actually duck under it. But after most of her strings, like her forward 4, it's guaranteed. Her forward 2, it's guaranteed. And her 1-1, one, one, it's guaranteed. And her back 1-1, one, one, it's guaranteed. So basically everything that you would want to do it off of is guaranteed. The only really thing that I know it doesn't work off is this string. So there's a bit of a gap there and you can actually poke out of it. But um, as you saw there, even just the side toss on its own, like if they do happen to get hit by your string or they get hit by the side toss, because they do so much damage, you're gonna, you can get like a lot of unbreakable damage from this. So like that's 25% there just for an amplified special from a string and they, were, they can't break away from that, that's just guaranteed damage. So it's a very good projectile and I know <laughs> I've been talking about a single projectile for a while but it's just really good. And the second hits are lows and a lot of the time people don't expect it to be low, especially you know when they're thinking about this over the head that's coming after this string. And then you do this, then you know, they're just still blocking overhead and they get hit by the lows. It's just a really good projectile, and it becomes very plus from a distance. Plus five, and the plus, uh, the amplified version is even more plus. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Oops. Okay, her telekick is pretty simple. It's probably one of the least useful moves out of, like, even her custom moves. It, like, it has decent startup frames, but it only really has one use, and that's, like, to go under projectiles. Devora isn't the greatest example, because hers is like super slow, so anyone can react to it. But it is fast enough to react to projectiles, and you can go under them, and you know, you amplify it and you're in on your opponent. You will usually want to amplify it every time, because the regular version is kind of bad, you're like plus four, and you're kind of not that close. So once you hit it, you amplify it, and you're kind of close, and you've got decent hit advantage. And you know, you can just go in for her mix and stuff. But, you know, it's not that useful, it's really just like, if you're from a distance and you want to get in, and you see them throw a projectile, you do this, and you can punish it. Stop her doing that. Now the last one, I think is everyone's favorite, her ball roll. Unfortunately, in this game, yes, she does have to amplify it, even though, even like from a long distance, I've been trying to test like if she can squeeze out down ones or something, but it really doesn't seem like she can get anything off of it. So, every time you want a combo, you have to amplify it. But, you know, that's okay, at least she has combo. Some characters don't have that privilege. But, um, yeah, her ball roll, it knocks them up very high, so she has a lot of combo potential from it, and we'll get into that more in more depth a little bit later, but something you can do is something like this. So a simple combo, you can just do like jump attacks off of it into strings. That was really big damage and on its own. Or you can, even because they're so high, you can actually do down two combos um, and actually convert off of the down two. Oops. And that leads to really big damage. And that's 
combos like that are really good either way because if they break away, you've just done a down two, so it doesn't matter. You get a big chunk of damage. But, in, but if they even if they don't break away, you can still convert off of it. So it's really good to have combos with down twos in them. It's very powerful, and they just do a lot of damage. So yeah, ball roll very good for combos, and also kind of like a tele kick. And this is why I feel like the tele kick is kind of redundant. It's really good for going under projectiles. I'll just quickly get Devora to do it again, but it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. She'll throw a projectile, and I'll just completely roll under it. She gets really low to the ground, and I'll go under most high projectiles, and even quite a few mid projectiles. She'll just go straight under them, like Nightwolf's arrow. She kind of goes under them most of the time, and uh, yeah. So if she does this, then you know you're going to punish them. You can amplify it. And another good thing about her ball roll is you can amplify it on reaction, so you can like press it late and you don't... Actually, it doesn't even matter because she can't amplify it on block, so it's really good in that way. She doesn't... because a lot of characters can accidentally waste your meter, like just trying to go into combos. But with Melina, because you can't even amplify it, you're, so you have no hope of wasting your meter, so you can just mash the amplify button if you think you're going to get a punish on their projectiles or something. And you know, you just get a decent chunk of damage for going under their projectiles. Like, that's a decent combo there. Okay, so those are all of her basic special moves. Let's quickly go over all of her buttons. Obviously, just like most characters in this game now, her pokes are really good. So her down 1, 7 frames, plus 13, pretty normal. The down 3 is 12 frames, so it's a bit slower, and it has decent hit advantage, but the hitbox and her hitbox is what really gets, is what really makes the move. So it's kind of reminiscent of her MK9 down 4. She gets, like, basically on the ground. She's so low for this move, and it reaches really far. So this is one you can just, like, throw out all the time. Because it's just so good, it reaches so far, it has decent hit advantage, so, you know, if they do get hit by it, you know, you can just go into your mids, and it's almost guaranteed, there's not much they can do, you can go into your low, go into this mid, is like, absolutely guaranteed. You can even, like, if you're really tight, jail into a standing too, but that doesn't really work too well, because they don't have too great of range, but it's really good, you can go into a standing moves and stuff. It's just a really good tool to just be, like, throwing out, because it's so fast, and she gets... She just goes under everything. She's so low, it's like Rambo's crawl. And her down four, um, kind of something you're not ever going to be using. I guess it's nine frames and it's plus 19, but it has such a weird hitbox. And like, it's pretty small ranged. Like, it's not going to hit like, oops. <laughs> it's not going to hit like out here. Like, it's not awful, but it's just also not great. Like, especially when you have your down three that is really great. It's just not anything you're going to be like, relying on too much. And, uh, yeah, okay, so her standing strings, her standing string is actually pretty disappointing, like, it's not very useful at all. The first hit is pretty minus, minus 5, the second hit's minus 2, which is a bit better, but the third hit, 1-1-3, one, one, is actually punishable at minus 10. Um, in other variations, this string is a little bit more useful, where she can actually get a grab off of it, but, um, generally, this... Her standing punish string is pretty awful, and it also doesn't have great range, and she also can't like do like a bunch of like standing ones in combos because it has a lot of recovery. So yeah, sorry, Melina, your standing string is pretty awful. The only thing you're ever really gonna be using it for is like to punish things, but like even that, this high is like a really good move, and we'll get into it in a second. And it's only one frame slower, so standing string, you kind of suck. Uh, yeah. So her standing two, her standing two, on the other hand, is actually really good. Um, it does start up in 13 frames, which is quite slow for a standing punch, but what's really cool about it is the string that comes off of it. So off of standing two, she has two, three, three, four. And this string is amazing in so many ways. So firstly, it is really good for hit confirms if you just do the two, three, three. Because it's a dial-in combo, so you just go two, three, three. And you have so much time to react to it, so I can say when I'm done dialing it in and then after that, I have so much time to react, so... Done. Done. And, like, she still has that whole animation coming out, so I can react if the opponent is getting hit in that time, so... Oh, yep, she's clearly getting hit, so I can go for a combo then. So that's a move you're just gonna be throwing out, like, all the time, and it's what you can be using, like, in the neutral, or, like, after pokes or something. Because then, like, you can tell if it gets blocked, and if it is blocked, you can just leave it and keep it on minus six, I believe, yeah? And obviously, if it hits, Go in for a ball roll and go in for a combo. It's super easy to hit confirm, a really great move, and it does a lot of damage, because it's so long. Yeah, so you can get big damage combos off of it. But not only that, the 4 after the 2-3-3 three, three actually leaves her at plus 1, and really close to plus 1 at that. 
close enough to, to get a down one, which is what you really need when you're only at plus one, because you can't really enforce anything else, especially not her like 18 frame mid or 15 frame low. <laughs> like there's not too much she can enforce from it other than a down one. But once they're respecting your down one, if they keep blocking this, like, you know, you can go in for some grabs or something, or if they are, you know, really respecting you, it could be like crazy going for a an overhead or something. Um, keep in mind though, it is a high, so they can duck under it. But, you know, a lot of the time they're not going to want to take that risk because you can, you know, do her ball roll or something. She's got a lot of mids, mid specials that she can do, especially in other variations. So, a lot of the time people are just going to take the plus frames, which is lucky for you. Because you can get things off of it. And if people are trying to mash out of it, like, a ton of people go online. <laughs> like, whenever you have plus frames, people just mash out of it anyways. But, um, if they're trying to do that, her back two actually works pretty well for that, because she jumps in the air and lifts up her legs, and goes over a lot of pokes. Like, most pokes, she just goes flying over. But, you know, of course, if you want to just keep it completely safe, just do a down one after it. But, that is a very good string. It's probably my favorite out of her whole arsenal, because it is just really useful in so many ways. Okay. Now, her standing three, it is actually plus one block. Plus one. So, it's something that you can stagger, especially since it has an extension after it that is an overhead. So, that people are going to be watching out for that overhead. So, you can just keep doing stand three, stand three, stand three, and like maybe go in for a grab, like stand three grab, or stand three into a low or something. It's very good because stand three four is an overhead, and you can actually combo off of that overhead. So, it's a very powerful tool to have, and it is one of her least scaling specials in the game. So, when you're trying to get max damage combos off of crushing blows or anything, you're going to be wanting to use uh, stand 3-4 because it's very good and it's only two hits so it doesn't use that much gravity and it also doesn't scale much at all so it's very good for long combos and as I said it's a very good stagger tool because it's plus on block you actually do get to reinforce down ones and stuff after it and you can also go you know in for other mix-ups because you know they're being worried about the overhead that comes after it because if they get hit by that overhead you're going in for a full combo her standing 4, um, less useful. It has 18 starter frames, which is really long, and it's pretty obvious when it's happening. It does look amazing, though. I love this animation, but I just wish it was a little bit more useful. It is plus 2, but, like, when you have a 12 frame plus 1 move, like, it's not gonna be that useful, like, when you can just do her stand 1 for plus frames, because plus 2, just like plus 1, isn't that great. Um, she can combo off of it, but, like, I don't see when you would be, because you have to, like, guarantee and dial in the ball roll. So, yeah, I don't see quite what the use is, but you know, maybe if you want some plus frames off of some jump-ins, you can do that, which does look pretty cool, I will admit. But, yeah, it just looks cool, I think that's the main purpose of it. Okay, anyways, her back one is one of her, is basic, yeah, what am I saying? It is her best mid-string, it's 10 frames, so one of the faster mids. Um, just the only bad thing about it is its range is pretty abysmal, so like, even like here, when we're right in each other's face, this move is gonna miss. You have to be really close for it to hit, like, right, just like, on top of your opponent for it to, for it to hit. But, you know, at least it's 10 frames, so that makes up for its kind of bad range, so it kind of gives you time to, like, dash in if you want to use it. Because it's very fast. Now, off of it, she has either back 1-1-2, one, one, which is safe, but it is a high and they can duck under it, but they're not gonna bother wanting to do with that, because she has a lot of mids, and she can actually, um, jail into her amplified side tosses which keeps her safe. So a lot of the time you can just do this and keep yourself completely safe at minus six with pushback. Or she also has back 114, which is death on block, minus 14. And it doesn't have that great of put pushback, but you know, you're almost definitely gonna get punished for that. But luckily this string is actually quite useful and I'll show you why. You've probably already seen it, but uh, oops. If you end a combo in it, oops, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Just got run and recording with combos. What? Oh my god. There we go. It goes into a crushing blow if it is the sixth hit, I believe, in a combo. It might be seventh. Let me just check. Um, back one, one, four. Triggers in a combo seven or more. So if it if the four part of it is the seventh hit in a combo, uh, it will trigger the crushing blow, which is pretty easy considering like. Even just that is going to be enough hits, I believe. Oh my god. It does have a really strange hitbox and juggle, so it can make it kind of weird to hit, but basically any combo 
that you're doing, you'll be able to cash out into this, which is really good because, you know, it's kind of like Kitana. She can just have this, like, high damaging option to end her combos once a game. Just, you know, maybe end a round or make some comebacks. But, yeah, it's a really useful string. And, you know, obviously you can use it off of basically any anything where you'd be doing a combo. And you can get some pretty big damage. Oh, it can be pretty hard to time, like, after long combos because the 4 comes out pretty slowly. But like, even just that super simple there is 400 damage, which is huge just for a crushing blow into a string. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe if I just do stand 3 it'll work. Ah, <laughs> one more time. Yeah, there we go. See, I mean, it wasn't even really worth the meter, it's almost 500 damage, but like, even just into the string was 400 and a bit, so... Very good damage that she can get from that string and just have a big cash out once in a game. Okay, her back two is where the mix starts. So this is a safe overhead that is relatively fast for an overhead to be honest, compared to Devorah's. I think Devorah's is like 27 or 28, so it's faster than hers and it also reaches way further, like, so, like a bit further than like starting distance, or maybe it's exactly starting distance. Yeah, it might be exactly starting distance. But a really long-ranged overhead, it reaches very far, and it's safe. So she can just throw this out whenever, you know, just willy-nilly, making the opponent just not know where to block. And, you know, combine that with her really good sweep that's 12 frames and also safe. She can just be throwing these out all the time at absolutely mixed city, so... And that just is really good for making the opponent really worried, you know, not how, know how to block. And a lot of the time when that happens, they just, you know, mess up and just do the wrong thing and, like, you go in for a low and you can go in for a full combo because you made your so opponent so scared of how they're supposed to be blocking against you. So, it's a really good overhead. And also because she does this jump here, um, it actually makes it a really good uh, low crush. And low crushes are also generally... Uh, oops, did I just record her doing nothing? <laughs> if I get Devorah to run in a throw... If I do this move, it actually, because she counts as airborne, because she's doing that leap. So during this leap, she's completely immune to throws, and a lot of pokes will just go straight under her. So it's just a great thing to throw out, and it completely destroys all throws. So if you think your opponent's going to throw you, but you don't want to guarantee, like, go for a down two, because it has pretty bad range, you can just go for this, safe overhead, which even if they don't go for a throw and they're actually just blocking, it's probably going to hit them anyways, because, you know, it's an overhead. <laughs> but it's just crazy how it just completely... Dodges, dodges throws, like, complete, absolutely just ignores them. Really good move. Actually, while we're talking about destroying throws, um, she actually has a lot of moves that do this. So her forward four also has the same properties. So she jumps in the air, she will just completely go over any throws. It's a bit harder to time because she's in the air for a little less longer, but, like, it's really good having moves like this because you can just throw them out over and over again and not be worried about your opponent throwing you because you're immune to the throws. Yeah, as you saw there, punish, which means the throw came out and it recovered and she's getting punished for it. So it's really good that she can do this. And then, you know, obviously off of that one, she can get a combo for it. But the back two is just, you know, it's these are such amazing moves. Also, her back three works like this pretty well because she bends down kind of awkwardly. And her forward two is really good at it, because I don't know why it is, like, she doesn't even get that low down, but she just becomes immune to throws while she does it. Like, they just don't hit her. Like, yeah, from their punish. And she's not getting that low to the ground, but just, like, if this, the startup is there, she just completely ignores them. Like, see, yeah, like, that, when it's a punish, it means the throw actually has happened, and it just missed, and it's a punish. And that's really good for this move, because, you know, just a crushing blow if it punishes a high. And we can go in for some big damage. So yeah, she has basically two, like, down two crushing blows, basically, w with that. So anytime anyone's going for a throw, she gets big damage, she can catch out on... Oh, oops, wrong variation. But, um, yeah, basically just don't throw against Melina, because she will absolutely annihilate any of your throws. Like, everything she does... Like, even... Oh yeah, this stand four because she's in the air for that thing. Doesn't get hit by throws. She just has so many things that she's just like, nope, stand one pokes. Like, people like to do this all the time. Like, so you just go stand four. Nope, do not throw me. That is crazy. Wow, yeah, because she's in the air, like, for that whole animation. Maybe that's what this is good for. She's just in the air, punishing your throws. But yeah, so many of her moves do this. 
really good tools. Her 4-2 is probably one of the most notable ones, because she actually gets a crushing blow for it. But also, she also gets that with the down 2, so it's almost like the same crushing blow. But the fact that she can just get these off so many moves and like don't have to worry about throws is really powerful. I know I talked about that for a while, but that's one of Melina's really strong points. Okay, so yeah, we were talking about her back 2. And obviously, just then we talked about her forward 2. Um, it's actually a safe low on its own, minus 7, and it actually has surprisingly long range. It's almost the same range as her overhead. It doesn't look like it reaches that far, but it's actually it reaches at basically, um, at basically round start. So I'm just like doing this move right as we start, and if I just take a micro step forwards, it'll hit. So yeah, really powerful move. It is a really long reaching low, and combined with her 25 frame overhead, she has the safe low and a safe overhead that she can just throw out. And the low, if you want to guarantee, I mean, if you want to, um, what, wait, what's the word? <laughs> if you want to commit, you can just be gung-ho and just go, go into a ball roll, and if it hits, you get a combo. And so yeah, just the fact that she has two, like, slow, low and overheads makes it really hard to block her, like, off of, like, jump-ins and stuff. Like, it's gonna be very hard to block her consistently, and it's scary that she has two of them that are very long range and very safe. And as we saw before, if she punishes a high attack, she gets a crushing blow for this, and she can get pretty big damage from it. It can be a little bit hard to time the forward one in there, but it just adds a, a bit of extra nice damage. It can be really hard, apparently, especially while I'm recording. There we go. And, oh, oops. <laughs> Down 2 is actually going to be one of her best enders, because it does a lot of damage, and it's consistent, unlike some of her other enders. So yeah, you can get good damage off of that. It basically just works like a down 2 crushing blow, as we talked before. It just goes under things for some reason, so that's really good. Okay, uh, and in other variations, she'll have extra strings off of it. So, her back 3 is this interesting low. It's kind of a similar speed to her other one, yeah, 17 to 15. And this one is not safe, but it has does have a safe um, ender. So if she does this, that makes it completely safe. Unlike this one, which is safe at the start, and then actually becomes unsafe if you do the ender. So they're kind of the opposites to each other. But, uh, you know, this is just a good throw, uh, low to throw out. It's just completely safe. It has a lot of, uh, like, a pretty decent hit advantage. You can go in for guaranteed jump-ins, you know, unless they wake up, of course. But, you know, it's pretty good, and it leaves them pretty close. But, you know, it's just a nice double-hitting low string. You can go in for your mix-ups off of it, because it has a pretty lengthy knockdown. Go in for your overhead, make them block on wake up. Pretty good stuff. Um, her back, back 4, we've already talked about, is a pr really good sweep, 12 frames and minus 5, and it double hits, a lot of the time people will get hit by the second hit, like even if they block the first, it's just a really good sweep, and combined with her amazing overhead, it's amazing. Okay, now her forward 4 is kind of like Sindel's forward 4, except it has a little worse range, and it's a bit slower as well, so kind of just like a worse version, but she does, in other variations, have good strings off of it, and she also has an overhead off of it, so she can get some mix, especially in variations where she has a low, like the low side toss, or a low slide, she can get some good mix off of this, and it is unfortunately unsafe, if you do the overhead, minus 11, and like no pushback, so you're right in their face, but you can keep the whole like string safe if you wanted to do something like this, and you're completely far away, but the 4-4 on its own is safe, minus 7, but you are very close, so you've definitely given up your turn. But if you do do the amplified side toss, you're basically back in neutral. Like, minus 9 all the way over here. There's nothing they're going to do, like, to, like, guarantee it against you. You can even do a ball roll if you wanted to. But yeah, it's just a really good string. It is a bit easier to hit confirm than Sindel's forward 4. Oops. Oops, oops. Yep. Uh, it's a bit easier to hit confirm than Sindel's forward 4, but, uh, like... I don't know, especially when you're playing online, that's not something you can be doing very consistently. But, uh, yeah. It's a really good move, and especially in other variations where she can actually combo off of the overhead as well. It's a very powerful tool. Okay. Um, quick note on her throws. You know, they're pretty good. Her jump one hits down pretty low uh, below her, which is better than Reigns. And, you know, her jump two reaches a bit further in front of her. And, you know, it does a bit more damage if you wanted to get some extra damage in combos. And do jump twos. If you want to make them a bit more simple, but still do pretty good damage. And her jump kick is a pretty decent angle. Nothing to complain about, but, you know, it's also nothing spectacular. But yeah, at least her jump kicks and jump attacks aren't bad. Okay, uh, her hop attacks. Her, her hop attack kick is, like, kind of the worst hop attack I've ever seen. Like, look, I'm very close to... 
Devorah right now, and it's still not hitting. It doesn't even hit here. Like, we are in range to hit, like, down ones and pokes and stuff, and our health attack still doesn't hit. So you're basically never going to be using this one. It's always going to be your health attack jump, because it has slightly better range, but in general, her health attacks are basically just pretty awful, and you're not going to be using them too much, but, you know, make sure you use this one. Because <laughs> at least it has some range. You will hit. Okay, okay, they're both pretty awful. <laughs> Okay, um, her throws. Her throws are actually pretty interesting. So her back throw, I mean, it just looks amazing. That's the main thing, and it leaves you pretty far away if you want to throw some projectiles, or even just be YOLO and go in for a ball roll. Her forward throw one, throw, her forward throw though, is the interesting one, because it leaves you very close, close enough for throw loops. So you can dash in and get a throw, like, as they wake up before they can press anything. So, it's very good. Throw loops are very powerful in this game, so you know, and if you don't know what throw loop is, it's basically just, after you do a throw, it's the mix-up whether you do another throw, or a mid, or just a poke. And there's almost nothing the opponent can do about it other than wake up, and obviously she has some decent long-ranging mids and overheads and lows she can throw out, so... Throw loops are very scary for Melina, especially at this range, so whether you're gonna... They have to guess whether you're gonna, uh, run in for a throw, or go for a low, or an overhead, so yeah, pretty scary. But what's really interesting about a fourth throw is that if you wait 10 seconds, and I bet it's been about 10 seconds now, so if you've gone 10 seconds without getting hit, and without being airborne, so without jumping or being airborne, you get this throw crushing, crushing blow for 300 damage. Unfortunately, you can't combo off of it like Rambo's, but it's still very good that she has that option for a throw crushing blow, and it's, I like the unique requirements. But, <clears throat> to a note on the requirements, it is kind of weird. So when it says you can't... Or, does it say you can't jump or you just can't be airborne? So yeah, without jumping or being knocked down. So by jumping, they just mean like being even the slightest bit airborne. So there are a lot of strings that actually count as being airborne. So if I've waited 10 seconds, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, it should be charged. But if I do something like my back 2, as you can see, she kind of jumps in the air then. And then I actually don't get my throw crushing blow, because it resets the counter, because that counts as a jump, apparently. So anything where she does a little jump in it, completely resets the counter, which is really annoying. So like, a lot of her good strings, like even this, that tiny leap she does in there, completely resets it, and she can't get the throw crushing blow off of it really annoying. Her forward 4-3, which in other variations where she can combo off of it and keep it safe, is a really good tool, but that also counts as a jump, so she won't get the crushing blow from that. And also if she does any crushing blow, so like if she does this like back 1-1-4 one, one, after a long combo, and that gets a crushing blow, that'll reset the counter. So yeah, you can't do any back 2s, no forward 4-3s, no 2-3-3s. Three, threes. So just basically just don't do anything. Oh, and you also can't do her forward one, which is an amazing- Oh wait, have we talked about this? I didn't go over her forward one. The forward one is an amazing high. Uh, it's nine frames, it reaches really far, just a little bit closer than starting range. But, and it's also minus- uh, it's also zero on- on block, which means you can go in for a poke afterwards. It's just a really good stagger tool, and it recovers so quickly, you can just keep doing this. And because it has a quick mid that comes after it, you can just throw that out all the time. It's, you know, a really good tool, and if you want to be gung-ho and go throw out an overhead, you can, but it is unsafe, and you also can't special cancel the second hit, unfortunately, even into air specials. She just can never special cancel it, so... But other than that, it's a very good tool, and you'll be using it in combos and stuff, and even the second hit is, like, safe, so if you just want to throw out and, you know, have a mid that reaches really far, after a very fast high as well, it's a really good for staggers, you know, forward one into throw, because I think you're going to do the second part of it really good, or you can just go, like, forward one into a sweep, forward one, you know, into more mix-ups. It's just very good, because it's zero on block. But yeah, back to talking about our throw. So yeah, any of these moves are going to reset the counter, and yeah, that's just really unfortunate. So if you are wanting to get her throw crushing low and you want to charge it up, you have to change your combos quite a lot. So you have to do something like this, and like, maybe do something like this, and go in for another ball roll. Or you could maybe do something like this, if you want to do a bit of damage. You can go in for Amplified Cytos, that does pretty decent damage. But you just make sure you don't go for any overheads, or um... You know, anything that puts her even the slightest bit in the air, because it will reset the counter. But, if you do follow those rules, and you do want to use it, you can actually get it pretty easily. So like, after you do a combo, like something like a... Just something simple like this. You know, it does decent damage. 
maybe run in and go for this and then like you do a poke or something and then go into a grab. That's about 10 seconds there just from like being after a combo. You go for like a low or two and then into a few pokes and then you get a throw crushing blow. It's pretty amazing. And she has a lot of opportunities to get it in this game. Like in a game because, you know, it's not like the throw escape one where you only have one chance after they throw escape. So, you know, anytime when you decide you will just like not jump and you want to go for the throw crushing blow, you can do that. So, it's a very unique one and I, I, I like seeing how people like to set it up. Anyways, I think that's all of her default moves. There's nothing else really to talk about. Oh, there's also her fatal blow, which I'll put myself on lower health to talk about. So a fatal blow is kind of like Shiva's. She does four attacks. Oh wait, no, just three, but there is an overhead in there. I didn't actually know that. So that's really good, and that's gonna catch a lot of people online, just like Shiva's, just with that quick overhead just in the middle of there. But yeah, you know, it's a fatal blow, it does good damage, and because she has like that whole running string, it reaches really far. So if you wanna, you know, go through an armor through a projectile or something, or just you know throw it from far away, it will still hit from really far. And it's decently fast, 19 frames, so it is pretty easy to combo off of um, some combos. You're usually just going to do like forward 1 into it, or like maybe forward 4. And you can get pretty good damage off of it in most situations. But yeah, having that overhead in that in it is going to be really good, because it'll catch a lot of people slipping. Um, so a combo that might do a little bit more damage is going to be something like this. There we go. Or even mash to get maybe the damage bonuses. Yeah, that's going to be just about 400. Yep. So yeah, that does even more damage. So, you know, if you do the down 2 into the forward 1. And obviously she'll also get... Easy confirms off of her like down two crushing blows and that kind of stuff. You can probably even do like it needlessly with something like this. Oops, not that. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. And that didn't cost me any meter, and it's going to be a pretty big chunk of damage. But obviously you could throw in a ball roll there, and it'll do maybe about 500 damage. Oh wow, this is going to- Oh, this did about 500 damage! Man, that was z zero bar spent, only a fatal blow off of a down two crushing blow. That was above 500 damage, that's pretty good. I wonder how much I would get if I did spend a ball roll in it. I wonder if I can do something like, uh... What'll do a bunch of damage? Yeah, maybe just the forward four? Okay. Oh, it puts him too far away. Um, that doesn't work either. Okay, it might be a bit hard to do it off of an extended combo then. Oops. I'll just do a forward one. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sure there's something more optimal you can do um, to get it. But uh, there we go. That'll be pretty good. Yeah, but honestly, that meterless version did almost the same amount of damage, and it didn't cost you any bar, so I'd recommend just doing that, because that was a big chunk of damage. But anyways, yep, yeah, that's basically Melina, uh, basically, without anything equipped. But now let's go into where things really get interesting, and where we have custom moves equipped. So the first variation that we're going to show here, I'm not actually really showing these in variations, I am just have them equipped in variations so we don't have to keep going out of the ability selector. But... In this combination, I have her extended strings, her command grab, stabby scotch, and her unusual ball roll, called Rolling Thunder, where she goes like this. And this is probably my favorite variation with her. A lot of people will have this exact variation, but without, um, they'll have a, the low side toss instead of Rolling Thunder. I just don't really like the low side toss, because I really like the regular side toss. Like, the low side toss is really good, but I just don't like how it replaces the regular side toss, because I think it's just such an amazing projectile. Like, it can keep yourself really safe, and cancel it off of strings like this, keep yourself very safe. It's just really good, so I like to keep it and just throw in something else. And, you know, this ball roll has a few good uses, which we'll talk about in a bit. So to start off, she has extended strings. I think that the, um, it only costs one slot in your... Uh, like a custom moveset, it's called Playtime, 
And basically she just gets a bunch of grabs off of some of her strings, which actually makes her standing string useful finally. Because she gets a throw off of it. And does, you know, 100 damage. But it's just really good at, like, you know, making your opponent keep guessing and be worrying about all of your mix-ups, because now they have to be pretty worried, you know? You've got overheads, lows that are all safe, you know? Even if you do this, you're gonna go in for a throw. Like, they have to be really worried about how they're blocking with this move. They can duck under it, but, you know, you can go in for a mid, or you can actually jail into her side toss to keep herself safe. Or if you want to be crazy and use this string for some reason, you can go in for this mid, and it'll catch them trying to duck, but it's also unsafe. She also gets um, an extension off of her... Oops. Turn off those. She also gets an extra extension off of her forward one. So her forward one three goes into the grab now. It's not an actual grab, it's just an extended animation, and it does a bit more damage. And that actually becomes a pretty good combo ender for her, for her because 143, her down 2 does 140, and that's was is usually her most damaging combo ender. But, and um, this one is the one that you use most, because they're at the angle that you can't really get it down to, so a lot of time you're ending your combos in 130 damage. But now you can actually get 143, which just adds a bit of damage to your combos, so off of down 2 crushing blows you can get a little bit more from stuff like that. And the last three string that she gets from the extended strings is definitely my favorite, and it's off of her forward four. Her forward four three actually now doesn't knock down, and it also can go into a grab at the end. It's not an actual grab, it's just a grab animation. And so that does big damage, 155. Also a really good combo ender, obviously, because it does even more damage than that other string we showed before. But she can also amplify it for a plus 20 restand. Leaves them, like, decently close, close enough for her overheads, or her low. So... Plus 20 for Melina when she's got all of these mix-ups is pretty crazy. And, you know, obviously because it's so plus, she can just dash in and go for throws and stuff as well. But keep in mind, her 4 4 3 does still reset the counter for the, the throw crushing blow. And this also makes her string a lot safer at minus 8 if she does the grab at the end. Um, that is technically punishable for, like, people that have 7 frame or 6 frame pokes, but... Man, online, you're not going to get punished for this. Like, 90% <laughs> of the time, no one's going to be punishing this. And even if you are worried about it, you can jail the first two um, the first two parts of it into the Amplified side toss, and you're, what, minus 10? Sometimes it's minus 8. And you're, you know, minus 9. All the way out here, you're completely safe. So, that's a really good string, and that's probably the move that you can put with, like, almost any of her variations, just because it's so good. It gives her, like extra combos, because she can actually, like, you know, have this string and combo off of that part now. Oops. She can actually use it as a combo ender as well. Oops. It can be a little bit tight off of a jump one, but you can just do it. Let's try one more time. Yeah, but okay. I don't want to be here all day. You can get off of the jump one, but you can just dash in and do it as well. And if you do use it to end combos, like, even if it's been, like, a really long crush crushing blow combo, you can get it pretty easily. Wait, I'll do, um... And you can amplify it. You've gotten pretty good damage, and you've gotten the plus 20 resand, and you can go in for more mix after it. So, it's, these are really good moves, and I think they're pretty crucial to her, her cool tool set, and I'm going to be using them basically whenever I use Melina. And just to show what the, um... This move is oh, wait. <laughs> this move is really good for um wait now if I turn off throw uh This one is a really good damaging way of ending her long combos. So four hundred and twenty three for one bar there, that's really good for Melina. And uh, yeah, so they just have a lot of uses, good for ending combos, good for starting combos, like this one. That she can even go in for mix if she has a low side there, just go in forward 4 into actually the low. You know, even just on your own you can do it, you know, if you just do forward 4 and then go in for a low poke or something. But yeah, really good moves. Something you're always going to want to do because it's basically her best custom move. Next thing is her stabby scotch. Oops. It's kind of a weird input, it's forward back, or forward down back. Um, but you know, it's a command grab, it does pretty decent damage, if you amplify it, it does the amount of damage as a normal throw. Uh, it is a high command grab, but it does take off of all of her pokes. Which is good. Oops. Does it, wait, can you even do it off of it? Yeah. So yeah, all of her pokes, she can cancel it into, and like, it's actually tick throws, but she doesn't have any other tick throws. 
which is why kind of you would want to have moves like this, because that's an actual tick throw that actually works. There's anything else into a stabby scotch just does not work. I trust me, I've tried them all. <laughs> but uh, it is a high command grab, so it's not that great. But you know, a command grab is better than no command grab, and it just gives her something like powerful to do off of her uh, off of her pokes. So unless they jump, there's not really much they can do off of it, other than like neutral duck, but that's also pretty unsafe, because you know, you have this, which a lot of the time they can't get out of, and you also have your ball rolls. Um, another note on this move, which makes it really, really strong, is it's actually her anti-breakaway tool, it breaks armor. So you know, after you get your down two crushing build, if you throw this out, I think you can actually combo it off of her forward one. It's a little bit tight. It is pretty fast. Oh. Okay. I'm not able to do that at the moment, but it's her it's her armor break and if she does amplify it after it breaks armor, she will get the crushing blow for it. And that leads to some pretty big damage just because they decided to break away. So it gives her some pretty good, um, like guaranteed damage. And even off of her ball roll, which people can usually amplify after this part, you can actually do it there. And, um, it's a little bit tight, but I've seen, seen people do it. I'll try it now. A lot of the time, okay, maybe not if they're doing it super fast, but a lot of the time people end up breaking away after the, um, just the normal ball roll. And you can actually, yeah, get that off of there with some good guaranteed damage if you think they're going to break away. Because, yeah, a lot of the time people will break away before the actual rest of the ball roll comes out, because they can. And um, But even if you do do the amplified ball roll, you can dash up and get it pretty easily. And get some good guaranteed damage. Oops. Okay, <clears throat> so that's her, 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 um, her command grab. It's nothing too amazing, but you know, it is her armor break, and so it's pretty good as an armor break, especially since it's kind of fast, 10 frames. Um, so yeah, it's one of the better armor breaks, and it's also, you know, a pretty decent command grab. It gives her something to do off of her pokes, and you know, just gives them something to block. Or not block, I guess, but <laughs> something to look out for. But yeah, it's a move that just people throw in, because you know, it's an armor break and it's pretty useful. Uh, the next move I have in this variation is Rolling Thunder, which is her ball roll, like, kind of improvement, I guess. So it allows her to add some hits to her ball roll, and it adds 20 damage to the ball roll. So it adds a little bit more damage to her combos, where she would be doing, um, where she wouldn't get much da more damage anyways. So off of a BNB like this, she gets a bit more damage. Oh, let me turn off that through that crushing glow. <laughs> So she gets a bit more damage off of those, usually that would be just about like 400 damage, so she gets a little bit more damage off of her BNB combos. Um, but if you're comboing off of the ground, you're not going to want to do it, because it does actually use up a bit of gravity, so you can't really get the um, combos you would normally, like with the down 2 and stuff. Because as you can see there, they fell a lot faster. But you do actually have the option of just doing the normal ball roll if you hold down 4 as you do the ball roll. So if you just release it, it'll do this one, it does a bit more damage. If you hold it down, you do get the normal bull roll. So it's not like you're wasting or like you can't do the same combos as before because you do just have the classic bull roll still. So it's kind of just like in addition to the bull roll, she has a different type that does a bit of extra damage. And it's also actually a bit safer on block. So if I go back and do this version, it's actually only minus 16, which yes, is still punishable. But compared to her regular bull roll, which is like what, minus 23, minus 26. So yeah, it's a whole 10 frames faster recovery. And her ball roll, I don't know if I've talked about this before though, but even the regular ball roll can actually be kind of hard to punish for a lot of people online, because she recovers really quickly, like, after she does that whole, like, in the air, like, bouncing, like, into the air animation, she recovers super quick. Like, you can either, like, block, or just, like, even go for a down one, like, you can see how quick I recover from this, like, I crouch and block really quick after she does that, like, that bounce. And, um, a lot of the time when people go to punish it, like, she's actually airborne, so that now they're doing a juggle combo, and they're not ready to do that, and, or, like, a lot of the time people go for pokes, or, like, mids that go under her. So, the, the ball roll is surprisingly something you can actually just throw out, and a lot of the time you get away with it, and people don't actually punish it. It's 
pretty surprising since it's minus, minus 26, but people just always fail to punish it. Like, a lot of the time online, people just don't punish it. They either just miss it or, you know, they accidentally just mess up and just get, like, a stand one. Because, you know, then you get, like, fall to the ground because you're in the air, but... And this version of the ball roll is basically the same thing, except it's even a little less punishable. So she recovers very quick still, and she is airborne until she lands on the ground. So it's really hard to punish, especially since she's kind of like on top of them for a lot of their recovery. Like they're a lot off of a lot of things, she kind of goes like exactly on top of them, so it can be hard for a lot of people to punish. Um, but yeah, it's basically just a harder to punish version, and she can also do it from, from full screen now. Because usually if she did the ball roll, it would like end like about there, like even the, just a regular ball roll where she goes straight across the ground, it would end there. But if you hold down the button, she can actually just do ball roll completely full screen, which is, you know, it's pretty cool because it's not something she could do before. So, you know, it's adding a little bit more utility to her. So yeah, that's why I have this move. It's, the reason I have this is actually just because there's not really many other useful moves from Melina. I'm sorry to say, and we'll get into those later, but a lot of her other custom moves aren't that great. But this ball roll, at least it has, you know, utility, it adds some damage. She can get some, you know, high damage off of some after after some combos you know she gets an extra 20 damage which is pretty good so that's like kind of like adding a forward one in automatically um yeah it adds some damage it also gives her a full screen bull roll and it also makes her bull roll a little bit safer so i just think it's all around you know a cool thing to have it adds some damage like if i do i'll show another combo you can do with it And I always miss that old one. And I'm doing it down too, so I don't want easy crushing blows on. Oh my god. But yeah, it's gonna do like 350 damage, so it just adds some extra damage to our combo. So yeah, pretty cool move. Anyways, I think that's yep, all of the moves in this variation. Let's move on to the next one. So in this next variation, this is probably going to have one of the last, like, really useful moves that a lot of people use for Melina, and that's the low side toss. And, like, there's just so many reasons why this is also a great move. And the only reason I don't use it is because it does replace a normal side toss, and I just really like that. But this is by no means a bad move. It's really great. So 21 frames startup is pretty good for a low projectile. So not only does it hit low, it also has her go down low, so she can go under projectiles pretty consistently. She goes very low to the ground. I don't know why I did that so late. She can't, like, she can just react to the projectiles and, you know, go under them pretty, Devorah's is pretty slow, so it's kind of annoying, but, like, you know, with Katana's Phantos, when you know, like, how they're gonna come out, you can go under them pretty consistently. And if she goes under a projectile, she can get the Crushing Blow from the Amplified version and do a bunch of damage. Can you combo off of that? I don't think so. But it kind of left her in the same, like, animation that she is. No. no. But yeah, she can get a crushing blow if she goes completely under projectiles, and as you see there, um, when she does the Amplified, she stays down for even longer, so sometimes, you know, if you mistime it, you do kind of early, where you would just, like, stand up into it. Like, say, with Devora, she puts out a bug. Like, I stood up into it. If you think you kind of mistimed it, you can just Amplify it, and you'll stay down there for longer. But, you know, it's just a really good move. It's good for zoning, because, you know, it's a low, they actually have to block it, and, and you know, It'll do chip that instead of just they can duck under high projectiles. Um, and you know, you can amplify it for a bit more chip. So they have to block it, they'll, so if they want to avoid it, they'll have to jump over it, and that makes people, you know, mess up and do things. You can ball roll as an anti air and stuff. And it is also, uh, also good for counter zoning because she'll go under projectiles, so she, she zones while also not being zoned, so she stops herself from getting zoned while also zoning out, which is pretty cool. And it has a crushing blow if she does just that. And it's also a mix-up tool, because you know how there's this overhead and this string? So you can just, you know, throw this out there, or there's this overhead. That into low side toss. And some of these, the low side toss, it actually can be somewhat safe depending on the range. So, like, the pushback isn't great, but depending on where you are, like, a lot of the time people aren't able to punish this, like, consistently. Like, negative nine, like, if there's different pushback, like, if it's off of this, that's, that's basically completely safe. Negative 9 with all this pushback. And even, like, when it's minus, like, 11 from over here, or minus 12, like, some people can punish that, but it's pretty consistently safe. Like, people aren't going to be able to punish that very consistently. And it's also working as a mix-up, so... Pretty good tool. Pretty good tool for her to have. Keep herself safe and have mix-ups and zoning and anti-zoning. And a crushing blow. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. 
Okay, what else do I have in this variation? I have her loci, her side slide, and a vanished. Okay, so her side slide is a very interesting move, and I say interesting because I'm not really sure what the point of it is. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the only thing that I really see that it's useful for is it can keep her safe. So, you know, if maybe if you're going in for mid, you can cancel into it, and it is minus eight, and because she does that like 12 backwards before she does it, um, like they're not going to punish minus eight from that far away. So she can keep herself safe meterlessly, which is not something she could do before, because, you know, even with the regular size amplifiers that I was talking about earlier, which is minus eight, she does have to spend meter for that. <clears throat> so I guess she can keep herself safe meterlessly, but there is quite an obvious gap in there with the opponent, like especially someone like Devora, she could do a forward one and like come in and punish me, and because she moves forward while she does it, she wouldn't get hit by the move. So I don't really see what the point is of this move. You can hold it down and it goes further. So like, after to this, I, if I thought she was gonna go backwards, I could let it go behind her, but I just don't really see the point of this move. You can't amplify it, and it makes itself less safe. It becomes minus 10 instead of minus whatever it would be, minus 8. Um, I guess it does a bit more chip, and on hit, if you do manage to hit them with it, which doesn't happen that often because it's pretty slow, and it's just like something that slides across the screen, it's a mid, it's, there's no mix-up. Like if you get it 126, you know, you get some damage from it. The The one really cool thing that I like about it is that it is a kind of good anti-zoning tool in that it, she bends down the whole time. So unlike her low side toss where she just like falls down for the little bit of the animation, she's actually like just lying down or, or like bending over for that whole duration of the animation, which is really useful if your opponent's trying to zone you out and have a lot of high projectiles like Katana or someone. Devora is not the greatest example because, you know, her projectiles are pretty slow, but you know, if you do this, you can go under projectiles and hold it down for a pretty decent amount of time, and you know, go under them, and I guess you can punish projectiles with it, if you time it correctly. And, but what's really good about it is it actually has a crushing blow if she amplifies it. And she can actually combo off with that crushing blow. So, the crushing blow is just, if it's a counter hit or punish, it can punish anything. So maybe if they've, you know, pressed a button from the long distance, like they go to do like, accidentally press forward 4, they go to do a projectile or something, and you release this and do the amplified version. I'll just put on easy crushing blows. She actually gets a combo from it if she reacts. <laughs> yep, these are real combos. Um, but yeah, that's kind of cool. And if she is really far away, like not close enough to get a ball roll, she can get... Um, projectiles off of it, so like if she has the regular size, she'll get about like 21%, which is pretty good. But even with the low size, she can get- oops. You have to do it pretty fast. Oops, I just did it before. What? Like I literally just did it two minutes ago. Yeah, the timing can be a little bit hard, especially with the low side, because it's a bit slower. But with the regular side toss, you know, you can get some damage off of it pretty consistently. And as you saw, you can also get a ball roll. If you're close enough. <laughs> and get a combo going that way. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, maybe I'm just yet to see its full potential. Like, you also can't get the crushing blow. Oh, I didn't think you could get the crushing blow <clears throat> if it hits normally. Let me just test that. I'm... <coughs> Sorry. Um, I'm just gonna... Oh, wait. Oops. How will I test this? I'll just make her do a down two or something. Okay, so now she's just doing a bunch of down twos. I'm pretty sure you don't get the crushing blow. Wait, my own easy crushing blows. I'm pretty sure you don't get it if it actually hits. Yeah, so you don't get... You don't even get the crushing blow if the thing actually hits them, so... Yeah, I really don't see the point of this move. Sorry, maybe I'm just yet to see its potential, but I don't see how it's too useful other than its crushing blow. It's pretty interesting. You can get a combo off of it. Okay, and then the next move is her vanish. This move is kind of interesting, um, but the input, like what is the input? It's up, down, Y. So a lot of the time you're not going to be able to just like do this in the neutral because you know, you're going to jump. So a lot of the time how I get it is die by doing a down one and then trying to use the recovering frames of the down one. So while she's recovering from doing the down one, I do the up down and then I can do it. And this does move does cost a bar of defensive meter, like no matter what. But you know, 
that kind of makes sense. And if I turn off, um, need to rebuild, you can see that it does come back pretty fast. So like by the time that she becomes not invisible, she's almost gotten half of it back. So, you know, it's pretty good. Comes back a lot faster than recovery. Need to rebuild. You know, for a character like Melina, invisibility is pretty powerful because you know she has her ball rolls. Oh my god. She has the ball rolls. Her tele kicks. Um, tele kick actually makes her not invisible for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Like her ball roll doesn't. She has overheads and lows. So invisibility for her is pretty a pretty scary thing for a character to have. You know, she can mix you up really well when she's invisible because you can't see what she's doing. Um, she does have a momentary um, damage nerf while she's invisible, which I guess kind of makes sense. You know, you don't want her doing huge damage combos while she's invisible. But yeah, this move, you can like use it to end combos or like um, you can get it easily if you cancel it off of strings. Like that's an easier way of getting it and off of some things you can get it pretty safely. Like off of that, it's- oh, minus 31. Jeez. Uh, oh wait, no, if you actually hit the move, you can get it safely. So that's only minus 8, but a lot of other things you'll actually be punishable even if you do that. Like, that's punishable. But off of this, you can cancel it into it and go like that, and that's pretty safe. But yeah, it's a pretty interesting move. Basically just allows her to mix up and, you know, do some crazy Molina things while she's invisible. Okay, and the next variation... I don't even remember what's in this one. I'm pretty sure this is the mismatch of moves that no one uses. <laughs> or no one will use. So yeah, she's got the air sigh, the air tele drop, and the Carnum dash. And these are all very cool moves, but just the way that they are now, they're kind of garbage. So her air soaring sigh, this is probably the most useful because, you know, air projectiles are always kind of useful because, you know, it lets you control the air a bit. You know, her regular sigh is also already pretty high, like, if you're kind of trying to jump, and there's two of them, there's a high chance they're going to get hit by them anyway. You know, with the amplifier, there's so many things flying out, it'll be pretty hard for someone to jump over them. I'll just quickly show that now. i try and get away. Here, wait, I'll go under her. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> you see that they... If you do the amplified version, there's almost no way to jump over them. And even like the regular versions, they get hit by pretty consistently because they're very high in the air. So I don't really see the point of the air size, and you also can't combo off of them. Like, if I'm gonna have these air size, I want to be able to combo off them needlessly, like, kind of like Katana can. Like, even in the corner, if you have them hit really high with these, you kind of get a down one off, the, off of it, like, in the corner. You can get a combo off of them though, which makes them not totally useless. And they're probably the most useful move in this variation. So you can get them, like, you know, off of a, a, uh, a jump kick if you can cancel into them. You can amplify and she falls to the ground, just kind of like Katana. And she can dash in and get some combos off of it, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, wait, she doesn't have combos in this variation, but, you know, she can get something like two forward ones. Something like that, you know, get some good damage off of jump kicks. But other than, you know, being like a zoning tool that, like, can hit the opponent if you're... Like, they're pretty hard to hit, like, from the air as well, like, hit a grounded opponent with. You know, they're just not that useful because the regular side toss is so good, and she also, like, can't, like, convert from them or anything. I just don't really see what the point is. Like, unless she spends meter, but you just have, like, to commit to that, and, like, even that doesn't hit very consistently. But yeah, as well before, she gets about 24%. Um, yeah, so those are her air size. They're pretty, you know, they're okay. And next she has the tele drop. Like once again, like it's not bad, but like you just would never spend spend an ability slot on this when she has like when you have the option to get her command grab or get her extended strings, like why would you ever spend it on being able to do this in the air? Like the tele drop's already kind of like a limited move, like it doesn't have that much use. But like now she can just do it in the air. Like I guess it's a bit more useful, like if she jumps over projectile she can do it now then. But, like, Melina's not really a character that has problems getting in on projectiles. Like, al almost all of her moves, she'll have something that she can get in on. Like, either, whether she has the ball roll and she just rolls under projectiles, or the low sigh, she goes straight under projectiles. And she has this anyway, so, like, she doesn't really need more ways to go around projectiles, so I just don't really see the point in this. You can get extra damage in combos, like if you, um, do ball roll into jump three, you can get some combos that way. And I think you might be able to off of, um, off of it down two as well. Might be a little bit tired. Or maybe off of this one. 
No, that doesn't seem like it's gonna work either. But yeah, uh, off of her Amplified Ball Roll, which we don't actually have in this variation, she can get a Jump Kick into it, which does a little bit more damage than some of her other renders. But I, I don't see how that is worth like a whole ability slot. I feel like this move should just be something, something that she has universally, because it's not really that useful. And lastly, her Carnum Dash is cool in theory, but it just doesn't really do that much. So if she just does it like regularly, she does this slide, and just slides under the opponent, it's a low, does 60 damage, you know, that's pretty good. And she gets very low to the ground, so she's going straight under any projectile, even like basically most mid projectiles, like Liu Kang's fireball, like his low fireball, it goes under that, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, definitely Nightwolf's low um, mid arrow, his lightning arrow. And it'll go under a lot of mids, like it would go under her own mid and stuff. Like the only thing that could like possibly hit it is like a well-timed sweep or like a ground pound. But you know, it's so it's good for going under the those, and if you hold it down, she does do like a run-up into it, so she can get it from like very far away. If she does a bit of the run into it, and then releases it. And she can double amplify it for extra damage, but 150 damage? Like I could just dash in and do a throw and get basically that amount of damage. Not have to spend two bars of meter. Like, man, this doesn't seem that good. Like, I can get that much damage if I just did, like, a string. Like, oh, I got a string? No, nope, I get that much damage. I don't want to have to amplify twice in order to get that much damage. It does look really cool, don't get me wrong. I love how it looks. Like, the animation is amazing. And she can amplify it once, and once she does the one amplifier, she can choose which side she gets up off. Like, whether she goes to the left or the right. Um, but, like... Once again, it's kind of like her, um, her air teleport. Like, she can get in pr on projectiles with it, but it's not like she had a problem like that before. Like, even just the ball roll, which is what this move replaces, by the way. If you didn't realize, this move completely replaces the ball roll. It's probably the, the worst thing about it, because now she can't get combos. But, like, she can go past projectiles and stuff, but it's not like she had a problem doing that. Like, she could even just do that with the ball roll, or with anything else... She has, like I listed before, you know, her low side toss, her ball roll, her teleport, like just, yeah. I don't really see the point in this move, like you can combo off of it as well, like if I do something like this. You can combo into it, but like it also just doesn't do that much damage, like if I do it needlessly, like I did like nothing, I should have just done this. And if I do double amplify it, like that's costing me two bars of meter to get... 22% off of a jump kick, like, like I could get that much damage like doing this, like nearly, like, <laughs> I don't really, it just doesn't seem that useful, like, um, the one th good thing about it is that she can cancel it, so that can lead to some kind of cool pressure, I guess, if she goes into, um, you know, off of block strings and she cancel it, it's kind of like a run, I think can go in for throws, um, it's never plus or anything, and I don't think it's ever actually even safe, but you know, at least, you know, to cancel. The move itself, by the way, is also only minus 11, which is actually kind of, like, safe for a move of its caliber. Like, it's kind of like a flying kick or anything. Like, they're usually, like, minus 20 or over, so it's only minus 11, so maybe people mess up their punish, especially since it's very low to the ground, but it does recover surprisingly quickly. But I don't think that redeems it for being useless. <laughs> But anyways, that is unfortunately all of Belinda's special moves, and that's, like, kind of a bad note to end on. So I'm actually going to go back to my favorite variation, and we're going to quickly show off some combos, just to finish off. Because uh, we don't want to end on a sour taste, like that move just makes me sad. So let's go into this variation that's actually cool, where I have strings and stuff, and I can get cool combos. So I don't know if, um, easy question below is on, right? Yep, good. So, cool combos you can do, hit confirm it into this, just hold down 4 to do the regular ball roll, and then do something like this, that's big damage, that's actually even more damage with this string if she does it, so 345, that's pretty big damage, like damn, for 1 bar, that's certainly above average, and she can also go in for a Fatal Blow there, and that's going to be pretty decent as well. Well above 400, so it should be. Actually, not too much above 400. 
I don't know if that's worth it. It's probably going to be similar damage if you just like cancel like this. Yeah, that's going to be <laughs> similar damage. And it didn't cost me any meters. So you're probably going to be, if you want to use a fatal blow, if you want to really cash out, you'll probably want to do it after crushing blows, like as we saw before. Just this simple combo um, does a ton of damage. Oh, damn it. Even without the forward one, it did a lot of damage. There we go. But this does a lot of damage. Like, what, 520 was? This bit and zero meter spent? So yeah, if you want to really catch out with a fatal blow, do it off of a crushing blow. Damn, 552% just for a, a crushing blow into a fatal blow. So that's really pretty powerful. She could do a similar thing to this string, I presume. Oops. Man. No. <laughs> I will have a combo video coming out where, where I will uh, try to not drop combos as much and I'll just be talking about combos. But uh, I'm just quickly talking about some at the end. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll just do the regular string. Oh my god, what's going on? That's gonna be pretty decent damage. But most of our combos are gonna be pretty pretty like the similar combo routes. So you can either do a jump attack into the forward one two four, or you can do a down two and then into the forward one two four. And it's gonna be similar routes. So like, you know, stuff like this. The most damaging is from the down two. Oh, oops. <laughs> down two is gonna be the most damaging, obviously. That's really good damage, even without a jump in, it's uh, 323 damage, but if you are finding those a bit difficult, you can do like a jump 2, it's almost 300 damage, and it's a lot easier, like you don't need any micro dashes or anything, and you can't even do a jump 1 into like 2 forward ones. That can be a little bit tight, you know, it gets pretty good damage as well. You know, a little bit lower damage. Actually, if your timing is really on point, you can actually get two forward ones after the uppercut, but uh, I don't find going for that is too worth it, because yeah, you're kind of just wasting damage if you, like, you keep dropping it, and the uppercut combo already does like really good damage. I'll just try and do it once. There we go, A so like 330, so it gives you a little bit extra damage, but it's not really that worth it if it makes it really unlikely to actually hit the combo. But yeah, she gets big damage. She can easily convert into um, fatal blows, like off of basically anything. And off after um, like any kind of crushing blow, in my variation, like with these moves that I have equipped, I find it's really good to do something like this. Oops, oh, damn it. <laughs> but I'll just get the board to do uh, some throws. Because these, she has basically, as I said before, like basically has like two throw crushing blows. So wait, did I turn off? Um... So yeah, she can get good damage off of her down two and her forward one two, her forward two. And with this ball roll, she just gets a little bit more damage, and you can easily go into this. Oops, you have to do a little bit faster than that, and that just makes it her most damaging ender. What? You can probably sneak in a forward one in there, but I don't find it's worth it when it makes it a lot harder to hit the combo. There we go, 423%. <laughs> yep, that's definitely what it was. But anyways, that is Melina for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Some other- wait, just before we finish, I know I just started signing off, but wait. You can also, if you time correctly, you can go into the restands with this string. Can be a little bit tight to do it off of the jump one. Come on. What? But she, if you're finding that bit difficult, like I am right now, you can just dash in and do it like this. And that's pretty good damage anyways, and you get the plus 20 restand, which is really good. And it's also 
a lot easier to do off of crushing blows because they've used up a lot of their gravity and you weren't going to do a big combo anyways. So if you do something like this... Oh wait, no, not that version because that'll use up a lot of gravity. So just do regular ball roll off of this. And you can get, yeah, big damage. 422 into a plus 20 restan. You know, going for a mix-up, going for a fatal blow. They're basically dead then. But anyways, guys, I'm sorry if this, this was a bit long, but I hope you enjoyed. Um, I can't wait to play some more with Melina and find out. Because maybe some of those moves that I said were bad aren't that bad, and I just don't know how they are. But So I'm excited to play some more with her, and I hope you guys are too. And I hope you enjoyed this breakdown, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.